The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. From 75 degrees Fahrenheit and bright sunny skies to about two feet of snow. <laughs> Welcome back from the cruise, the horses and cows were saying. Now get to work. Plow snow, move round bales, dig out the trailer, split kindling, and put another Spirit of the West radio show together. That's about where we are now. Boy, we had a wonderful group of folks cruising the Sea of Cortez with us, and today you'll hear some of the stories they shared along the way. You find that darn thing. Till finally my horse was going down one path and I could see it was looking or knew something that I didn't know. And I crawled around in the brush and here there was a little cavity and it had fallen down into a, into a wash that was about 10 feet deep. And, and that's Don Howard and uh, how he saved the life of a newborn calf. And I guess you could call Baxter Black's story this week an alternative to horse whispering. Shorty, who broached no insurrection in the ranks, fired up an old two-lunger John Deere, dallied Elmer's halter shank to the bar, and drug him into the shed. Well, it could be more cold weather on the way, and the Rangeland News has some good information on how we can handle it. Jeff says the key is to help those animals give them more feed, higher energy feed if possible, along with plenty of water and, of course, shelter. And this week, Susie Knight is in the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight with a stressful day for a ranch wife. He stepped down from his bay horse, gently took her by the hand. Oh, tell me all about it, dear. I'm sure I'll understand. It's a good one. I think you're really going to like it. And on the horse training file, the question is, my mare keeps switching gates and tries to crow hop when I ask her to trot. What can I do about it? Well, I'll try and help. Got a good classic song of the West and the information on where the song came from. And you'll hear how Don Howard was trapped at the bottom of a deep hole with a newborn calf. Right after the young Oregon cowboy, Tony Lundervold gets us started. Just cause he was 83, his eyes were bright and focused. But when he saw these two young bucks with that mount of coo, he said, You better listen close, you need to hear the truth. Well, you call yourself a cowboy, well, you got a ways to go. Cause any real cowboy will take it nice and slow. If you want to catch that pretty gal, then listen to what I say. It takes a lot of time and patience when it's done the cowboy way. Billy watch this young cowboy try to saddle up a horse. Bay was getting nervous, he was using too much force. The old man seen it coming long before he got a seat. He laughed and shook his head as he landed in a heap. We well, you call yourself a cowboy, well, you got a ways to go. Cause any real cowboy can take it nice and slow. If you wanna break that kite, then listen to what I say. It takes a lot of time and patience when it's done the cowboy way. Well, today's generation has really gone astray. Wish we could all get back to the good old cowboy way. Well, you call yourself a cowboy, well, you got a ways to go. Any real cowboy will take it nice and slow. If you really want to live this life, then listen to what I say. It takes a lot of time and patience, but it's done the cowboy way. It takes time and patience, but it's done the cowboy way.
We were enjoying the January sunshine aboard the cruise ship a couple of hundred miles north of Portable, <laughs> Puerto Vallarta, and I was standing there with Lorne Ray, Russ Peak, and Don Howard. Here's a treasure house of cowboy wisdom and ranching experience <laughs> over the years. Yeah, man. Don and Russ and Lorne. Gosh. Right. I got your book, Don, and I read it from cover to cover, and that can't all be true. I think there's only one little paragraph in there that isn't true. Oh, which one is that? That's that one where that uh, brother dragged that horse upstairs by the tail and put it in the bathtub. <laughs> that was embellished. To get even bit. with his older brother. I can't remember all the stuff I read, but can, can you take me back to there was a calf that had fallen down into a, was oh, yeah. it a well or something? No, it was in a deep... Uh, canyon in a coulee in a pasture and it was down I couldn't find him for the longest time but I could hear the cow bawling and I seen she had a full udder she hadn't been nursed on for three four days I was about to give up and I heard the faint ball of a calf somewhere so I searched for hours couldn't find that darn thing till finally my horse was going down one path and I could see it was looking or knew something that I didn't know and I crawled around in the brush, and here there was a little cavity that had fallen down into a, into a wash that was about 10 feet deep and muck in the bottom. And, yeah. so, so he was still alive? He was still alive. He was ganted up and all covered with mud, so I jumped down in the... threw a rope down, or dallied on the horse, and threw a rope down in there. And, From your saddle horn? Yeah. Put hobbles on the horse and... And then I couldn't get out of the cave after I put the rope around the neck and the front leg so it wouldn't choke it. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll back the horse. So up. you I'll put your, the rope around the calf's yeah. front legs? Front leg and, and, neck. Yeah. and neck. Yeah. And you're down in the hole with the calf now? Yeah, I'm yeah. down. It's about 10 feet down there, and uh, he could not crawl out of there no how. Oh, man. <laughs> so your horse is up above, and you yeah. and the calf are down below. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Don must have survived because uh, he and Carmen were along with us on the cruise, and of course Don had his fiddle there too. And we'll find out what happened next when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Now it's back to uh, the bunch of great stories we heard on our recent cruise in the Sea of Cortez. Don Howard had ridden far and wide looking for a missing newborn calf, and his horse caught the scent and they found the calf at the bottom of a hole ten feet deep. So Don hobbled his horse, tied his rope to the saddle horn, and slid down into the hole, put the loop around the calf, and then he realized that it was impossible to climb back out of that hole. Then I couldn't get out of the cave after I put the rope around the neck and the front leg so it wouldn't choke it. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll back the horse So up. you put your, the rope around the calf's yeah. front legs? Front leg and, and, neck. Yeah. and neck. Yeah. And you're down in the hole with the calf now? Yeah, I'm yeah. down. It's about 10 feet down there, and uh, he could not crawl out of there no how. Oh, man. <laughs> so your horse is up above, and you yeah. and the calf are down below. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I thought, well, the only way to get out of here is if I, maybe I can back the old horse up. So I hollered at him to back up. And so he had hobbles on. Yeah, but he walked, he, he got back enough, threw a few waves at him with yeah. the rope. And he backed up enough, and it pulled the calf up just enough so I could get up on the calf's head with my muddy boots, and uh, my head was just sticking out the hole then. Oh, my gosh. And I was able to crawl out. I, I didn't take me long to get out of there once I had that footstool. Yeah. Yeah, I thought of skeletons and bones mm -hmm. and caves. Yeah. You know, I've... They thought that, you know, in a, 10 years from now, somebody would come along and all they'd find is your skeleton yeah. and the calf skeleton yeah. down in the hole. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> your horse, horse is gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. That, there's a pile of adventures. You had some some characters that uh, you dealt with at times around there. The shades of the old west with some of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, well, you get to meet a lot of interesting people through your life. Really, you do. Yeah. The book's selling well. We sold over a thousand copies. We haven't even tried. Yeah. We never did put it on the market. If you'd like to buy Don's book uh, for yourself or as a gift for your friends, you can call Don at 
823-7978. That's 403-823-7978. Next, it's the story of a young cowboy on a long trail drive, taking several hundred horses from Alberta down into Sweetgrass, Montana, after this fine song from Kevin Davis. Have you ever heard the sound of hoofbeats in the dirt? Have you ever listened to a cowboy sing at work? Have you ever heard the sounds of a gathering fall? Oh, that lonesome coyote call. Have you ever watched the sunrise? While sitting in a saddle Or look down from a hilltop At a valley full of cattle Have you ever seen the sight Of an eagle as he flies In that big wide open sky Things in this old world just don't have a price. A lot of folks are walking around unhappy with their life. And I know it's the simple things that God has made for me. So, cowboy. Rocky Mountains Lord, they almost touch the sky I've heard the bull elk bugle And the aspens up on high I lay down on my bedroll Beneath the stars above and I thank God for my life Things in this old world just don't have a price. A lot of folks are walking around unhappy with their lives. But I know it's the simple things that God has made for me. So, cowboy. I know it's the simple things that God has made for me So cowboys what I'll be Among the fine folks that were cruising with us, uh, we had our cruising cowboy band, of course, consisting of Don Howard and Reg Evans with the twin fiddles, Ed Peak on guitar and vocals, and uh, we also had the privilege of uh, visiting with Ed's brother, Russ. Yeah. Russ, uh, your brother was telling me that you were involved in uh, a lot of interesting things in the early ranching days and a couple, some big horse drives, was it? Yeah, I took, went with my uncles from Hannah to Sweetgrass, Montana one year. It was in either 50 or 51, uh, there was a railroad strike in Canada, so we had to trail them to Sweetgrass to ship them, to ship them out, wow. and I was 10 or 11 years old then. It was a, quite a trip. How many horses? About 500. My gosh. 490 or something, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how many riders? I think there was uh, four of us, four or five. That's all? Yeah. So oh, yeah. 500 horses? Yeah. Man. And uh, how many days did that take? Well, we were probably... Uh, Big end of two weeks, but we had to. We held up on the Milk River, just north of uh, of uh, Sweetgrass, waiting for the train to come. So we spent three or four days just holding them there. Oh, yeah. So we're probably all in told it was two weeks from the time we left Hannah till we loaded them out, hmm. something like that. And uh, you just camp along the way? Yeah. Well, my uncle had a little holiday trailer, and a couple of us slept in there. And I was 
small enough I could sleep on the front seat of the truck. Oh man. And what year was this? 50 or 51. 50 I can't remember 51. which one. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a horse pulled chuck wagon and a cook. Oh no, a no, no, like no. So what about your meals? Like how did you Well, just whenever my uncle showed up with the trailer, which wasn't very damned often. Ah. That's when and we he'd ate. feed you then. Yeah, he'd feed yeah. us then. <laughs> oh, you remember the horse you rode or did you ride several well, I, different ones? Actually I rode uh, the horses I rode were going to the can. They were still good horses. But uh, we only took two home. There were two that my uncles were riding. The rest were all went to the... But they were, you know, good horses, usable yeah. horses yet. Yeah. Wow. They had a little age on them, yeah. 12, 14, 15 maybe. But mm. still, today would have been good usable horses. Just went to the can. And after that was done and they were all uh, delivered and you're in Sweetgrass, how'd you get back? Well, we, my uncle had a... Came with a truck and uh, all the two horses in, and uh, I guess yeah, my, went back with my two uncles and myself in the truck. In the truck, yeah, the horses two horses. In the truck. Two horses, yeah. Oh, for yeah. So those were the days before. Nobody had a horse trailer much then, or a stock yeah. trailer. It was just stock racks on your on your half ton. More stories from the cruise in a little while, and next it's the one and only Baxter Black. When the spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan with a little peek at Elmer. What holds the loaded 30,000-pound trailer to the heavy-duty truck? What holds the 38-foot RV trailer to the dually? What holds the two-horse trailer with your daughter's favorite pony to the half-ton pickup? Well, the odds are it's a B&W trailer hitch, probably a turnover bowl, American-made, employee-owned, customer-tuned, and proud of their part in America's greatness. Young Andrew's boss and mentor, Larry, made all the farm sales. His specialty was bolts. He'd buy and collect buckets and boxes of assorted new and used bolts. Well, sorting, matching, and threading bolts and nuts was the perfect winter job for a kid on the ranch. Well, by early summer, Andy had organized ten years' accumulation. Larry and Shorty built a monstrous knick-knack shelf to hold the bolts. It was made out of scrap two-by material, was six feet tall, and weighed more than a homemade stock trailer. They stood this enormous monument to busy work against the north wall of their new machine shed near the pot-bellied stove, the bellows, and the new shoeing stocks. Before first cutting, the crew brought all the draft horses into the stocks and shod the gentle giants. All came willingly, except Elmer. Elmer was docile and as well-mannered as the others. He just refused to go in the new machine shed. Shorty, who broached no insurrection in the ranks, fired up an old two-lunger John Deere, dallied Elmer's halter shank to the bar, and drug him into the shed. Well, being tied to the noisy machine frightened Elmer and the machine shed terrified him, and when the engine noise started reverberating off the tin roof, Elmer went berserk. Elmer jerked himself free and bounded over the stocks, demolishing the bellows. He crashed from the bellows into the pot-bellied stove, knocking it over and breaking it into three pieces. Stove pipe, roof trusses, shoe and equipment, bird nests flew through there like shrapnel. Elmer rolled up against a new bolt rack, and it teetered precariously. As he struggled to his feet, he bumped into it. It fell over on him like a bomb building. Bolts, nuts, splinters, dust, and horse hair filled the shed. And Elmer slid for the door like a 2,000-pound skateboarder. Well, other than missing 10 square feet of hide and hair, Elmer was unhurt. Shorty promptly threw him down, hog-tied him, and hammered on the shoes. And I guess I don't have to tell you how young Andrew spent the rest of the summer, do I? This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Brought to you by B&W Turnover Bowl. How about a weekend pass to the 20th anniversary edition of the Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 17th to 20th, 2016. What a lineup of entertainers. Tom Cole, Brian Solomon, Alan Mulberg, Gary Felgard, Ed Pikikut, Tim Huss, the Western Spirit Band, and many of the performers from the very first festival 20 years ago. There's the B.C. Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, the Spirit of the West Rising Star Showcase, dinner shows, evening concerts, and a wonderful art and gear show with the best artisans in the West. Workshops on everything from guitar picking to songwriting with the best experts in the field. For folks in Alberta, Frontier Bus Lines has a great package trip, and for folks in Saskatchewan, so does Westwood Tours. 
You can get all the information at bccahs.com or call 1-888-763-2221. Hugh McLennan and the Western Spirit Band will keep you entertained. Great pure Western music, fantastic guitar picking, spellbinding stories, and lots of laughs. My guitar playing brother Jim and our great bass player Mike Daggert and I would love to entertain you. We're taking bookings now for the spring and summer of 2016. From a house concert to an auditorium, call 250-573-5731. In the working cowboy world, this guy is about as real as you can get. He's a fine horseman, pretty good roper, and one of the best bronc riders ever to come out of a shoot at a ranch rodeo. And a few months ago, Western Horseman Magazine had a fine article all about Matt Robertson. And here he is. The shadows grow, the sun goes down. The coyote howls his sorrow. The moon is full, the moon is bright I lay down for the night, rolling my bed Just thinking about tomorrow My best horse I will ride and We will wear off silver I will ride him straight up if the skies turn gray And the cold wind numbs my fingers I'll be satisfied My best horse I'll ride and Every cowboy hope he will make a top hand Master the rope Burn his own brand When his riding days are done And Mother Nature has run her course Every cowboy hopes He's rode one great horse best horse he will ride him slowly as if he can hold back the time and he will ride him toward the mountains get lost behind the sunset beyond the great divide his best horse he'll ride May your saddle never slip, your loop never miss. The only time you lose, be lost in a kiss. May you never be too lonesome when the sun sinks in the west. May your last judge be your fairest. And your last ride be your best. best horse you will ride her slowly as if she could hold back the time you will ride her toward the mountain get lost behind the sunset beyond the great divide your best horse you will ride your best horse you will ride News of the Rangeland, a roundup of news and coming events from around the West. We'll tell you what's new under the Western sky right after this word from the Cattlemen of Western Canada. As if dealing with the weather, the markets, the bank, the machinery, and the cows wasn't enough, trying to sort through government regulations, WBC issues, grazing permits, and all the time consuming things we've got to deal with can really have us scratching our heads here in BC. That's why nearly 2,000 producers in this province belong to and support the British Columbia Cattlemen's Association. The BCCA keeps us in close contact with cattlemen's groups in Canada and the U.S. 
Support the beef industry in BC. Join your association and get involved. Now the Rangeland News top of page one. Cold weather can really take its toll on livestock, as you already know. And here's Gary Crawford with an industry expert and some ideas about helping cattle cope. We humans have ways of adapting to the frigid weather that's finally arrived over much of the country after record warmth. We have coats and hats and just staying indoors, but livestock may not have any of those ways. However, cattle, for example... There are some uh, built-in, if you will, protection mechanisms that ruminants have. University of Kentucky Extension Livestock Specialist Jim Limcooler says, of course, cattle do develop heavier coats during the winter, but also... They have the ability to change their metabolic rates, which is really important. They'll increase their heart rate, their blood flow to their extremities to make sure that that surface area stays warm. And one of the unique things with ruminant animals is they have the ability to increase their food intake between 8 to 20 percent during periods of cold stress to help adjust to this cold weather. Jeff says the key is to help those animals give them more feed, higher energy feed if possible, along with plenty of water and, of course, shelter if at all possible. In Washington, Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We are all in this together. I don't care if you jump, dressage, or chase cows. This is going to affect you. Those are the words of Gary Miller from the Horse Industry of Alberta's comment on the effect of Bill 6 on horse owners. He went on to say the bottom line is we are going to be okay. This isn't going to be a big issue. The real problem with the bill was how it was implemented, he said. Well, that's interesting. Now, Canada has reduced the amount of greenhouse gas emissions produced by ruminant animals by 15%, according to a new study. Improvements in production and feed efficiencies, crop yields, and management strategies resulting in reduced emissions and resource requirements were largely responsible for the significant decrease in environmental impact, according to the first results of a comprehensive five-year study examining the Canadian beef industry's environmental footprint. And the Canadian meat industry has welcomed the resumption of beef and veal exports to South Korea. They were suspended back in 2015. Canada's Agriculture and Agri-Food Minister Lawrence McCauley announced the move on the 31st of January. Korea had suspended trade temporarily until the CFIA completed the investigation and technical report on a case of BFC that was uh, diagnosed last February. Now here's an interesting item I found that looks at Canadians from a U.S. news service. It says... As food prices continue to rise across all of North America, our Canadian cousins are getting hit hard. According to a report by the uh, CTV News Online, there has been a significant increase in many cuts of meat over the last two years. And even worse, the average retail price of beef is expected to rise another 4% in 2016, according to Statistics Canada. Certain popular beef cuts in particular have become quite pricey. Sirloin steak, for example, has gone up by 15.8%. Prime rib roast up 8%. Blade roasts up 8.2%. Round steak 7.8%. And ground beef up 7.3%. So you get the idea. Even the cost of what's called stewing beef has gone up by an average of 14.3% since 2014. The reason for the inflated prices... Canadian consumers are getting hit by the same tsunami that has driven up U.S. beef prices. High feed costs coupled with a drought across the Plains states, forcing reductions in the beef herd numbers, driving up wholesale prices as market demand exceeds sector supplies. Now, if there is a ray of sunshine in that scenario, it's the industry should be encouraged that beef demand has stayed strong despite the higher prices. And high prices also result in some collateral damage In this case, the rising number of thefts. According to CTV News, high beef prices have caught the eye of thieves, including those involved in organized crime. Organized bands of thieves are apparently targeting a series of supermarkets, stealing in quantity and then selling the meat wholesale to unscrupulous restaurateurs and bar owners. The thieves sell the meat on the black market. In order to cope with the increase in costly theft of beef products, a lot of Canadian grocery store operators are resorting to placing electronic security tags on packaging that triggers an alarm if the thief tries to exit the store with the meat. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? Now, I wonder 
if anyone's been caught stealing a package of veggie burgers recently. Well, for those of us trying to stay afloat in the cattle business, I find that Alberta Beef and Beef Illustrator are two very important publications, very informative, with valuable information no matter where you live. You can subscribe to Alberta Beef and Beef Illustrated by calling 403-250-1090. Just a reminder for you that uh, P&H Ranching Company's Bull and Ranch Horse Sale is Saturday, February 20th, 1 p.m. at the Innisvale Auction Market, where there are, of course, cattle sales every Wednesday and horse sales twice a month. For more information, just go to InnisvaleAuctionMarket.com. And uh, now, the final item. Just as I was heading for town the other day, Billy called out the door as I stopped to open the big ranch gate, the Moran Gate at the end of our driveway, and she called out, don't forget to pick up another mouse trap. And I said, what happened to the old one that I bought yesterday? And she said, oh, that one's full. And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the horse training file, I'll have some suggestions for a rider who has a problem with her horse switching leads, or switching gates, and crow hopping when she wants him to trot. And uh, what's that? Oh, you're wondering about our next cruise. Well, I hope to have some of the details for you when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Coming up on the horse training file, an interesting problem with a horse that keeps switching gates, and that's G-A-I-T-S, not G-A-T-E-S, and he wants to crow hop when his rider asks him to trot. Now, we'll deal with that, but first... Many of you have been asking us when and where the next Spirit of the West cruise is taking place. We have that information, and here we go. We're always looking for something a little different, trying to find a destination we've never been to before, and that's getting to be a challenge. Now, we've done the Eastern, Western, and Southern Caribbean all a couple of times at least. We've cruised the Panama Canal four times, two partials and two complete transits, one from Pacific to Atlantic, one from Atlantic to Pacific. The Mexican Riviera three times, Hawaii twice, we've been to Australia and New Zealand, so where next? Well, our next one will not be in January. It will hopefully fit that little window between seeding and spring turnout and haying in mid-June 2017. It will be... You guessed it. Way up north, north to Alaska. Way up north, north to Alaska. North to Alaska. We're going north for Russia's on. Yeah, the rush is already on. <laughs> the Spirit of the West gang will fly. We have over 40 people booked already on this one. And the Spirit of the West gang will fly to Anchorage on or around early June 2017. We'll have about three days of touring that includes the spectacular Denali National Park Railroad with wildlife roaming free, a look at the highest peak in North America, Mount McKinley, great meals, a fine hotel, and then we board a beautiful cruise ship for a journey down the Inside Passage with side trips to some of Alaska's most famous spots, sailing right into the amazing Vancouver waterfront. And uh, as I said, we already have a bunch of folks signed up for this one. Get all the details on our cruise page at u mclennancom or call the toll-free number 1-800-530-0131. Now the horse training file. My mare keeps switching gates. I ask her to trot and she starts to crow hop and tries to uh, run away. Can I train her out of this? That's the question from a, a listener, and I uh, will try and deal with it here. And to understand, or try and understand what's happening with this mare, I'd have to look at four elements of horsemanship that I learned from riding a lot of miles with my good friend Jonathan Field. Those four elements are path, speed, bend, and balance. Now, without all four in place, the ride won't go as well as you or your horse would like. And there's one more element I'll get to. Path, though, first of all, means your horse always follows your focus and travels exactly on the path you set for him. He stays between the reins and between your legs, and as long as uh, he's on the path, you don't pressure him in either direction. Bend means you can ask for a slight bend in his rib cage in response to light rein and leg pressure. Balance means he distributes his weight evenly on all four feet. And the problem with your mare now seems to be 
the speed. The principle here is what Jonathan calls, I set it, you hold it. In some cases, it takes a lot of rides, and basically it means the horse remains exactly at the speed you set, and the speed you ask for, more or less. Normally, if, uh, for example, you ask for a trot, your horse should hold the trot on a loose rein without speeding up or slowing down. In the case of your mare, if you feel her wanting to break out of the trot, break into a loper canter, I'm betting that uh, when you pull on the reins, that's when she wants to crow hop. And here's what I'd do. Instead of insisting that she stay in the trot, let her lope. Encourage her to lope. Keep her loping until she decides she wants to slow to a trot. And believe me, after a while she will. And after uh, a while, when she first wants to slow down, encourage her to keep loping. And about the second time, then let her slow down to a trot and leave her alone as long as she's trotting. And I think she'll find enough comfort there to hold that trot as long as you want her to. If you set it, she should hold it. And that's the horse training file. Boy, Lucky really enjoys her daily feeding of Hoffman's horse ration. She's nearly 30 years old and still looking just great with lots of energy. And I think that Hoffman's horse ration is one of the reasons why she's doing so well. You can find out more at hoffmanshorseration.com. If you live in Saskatchewan or southern Alberta and you're ready for a getaway, relax on a motor coach with West World Tours while they do the driving to the Kamloops Cowboy Festival. Departing March 16, 2016 with six nights accommodation, festival passes, three dinner theaters, two breakfast buffets, and a few extra surprises, call your favorite travel agent or see us at westworldtours.com. Departure from Regina with pickups in Moose Jaw, Saskatoon, Calgary, and en route to Kamloops. Spend the week in the beautiful Okanagan in supernatural British Columbia. Well, we ran into the singing farrier, Matt Johnson and his wife Ursula, and their beautiful little girl Annie, in uh, the Vancouver airport the other day. Uh, they run a fine trail riding operation near Clearwater, B.C., and uh, they've got about 20 real good horses. And besides being a lifelong farrier, Matt's a fine colt starter and trainer. And he wrote this song about the different kinds of horses you come across if you do that long enough. Once in a while you may get one that just won't learn a damn thing Then somewhere down the line you may get one that's just a cowboy's dream Oh, then you think to yourself, man, if I only had the money But you don't, so you won't, so you just let them go Hey, but you know there's something in it Ooh, that keeps me keeping on I'm out there every morning Yeah, at the break of dawn Trying to build a foundation of stone If you listen close enough They'll tell you their whole life story And little secrets about what's been going on Back at the farm Ah, oh, but you've seen it all And it's all in a day's work You just do the best that you can With what you got and let them go Hey, but you know there's something in it Keeps me keeping on. I'm out there every morning, yeah, at the break of dawn, trying to build a foundation of stone. Ooh.
You know, to really get to know that thing, you gotta learn to deal with all kinds. And you may soon learn that if the thing is a basket case, then it just might be a reflection of the owner's mind. Ah, but you've seen it all, and you know what to take and what not to. They can offer you all the money in the world, but if they're not right in the head, well, you just let them go. Hey, but you know there's something in it, ooh, that keeps me keeping on. I'm out there every morning, yeah, at the break of dawn, trying to build a foundation of stone, that's what I do I'm trying to build a foundation of stone And now let's get back to the cruise ship and the conversation with Don Howard and Russ Peak. I can remember in later years uh, working for LK Ranches at Bazano, but uh, <clears throat> did a little AI work for them and uh, stuff like that. But broke some colts. I wrote up quite a few colts for those. For them, LK Ranches. Right. Uh, and uh, they actually owned uh, some ranch land not far from where we live. McKinnon, was that Jim McKinnon? Yeah, and the that McKinnon was Chase, BC. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, was Jim and his brother Neil that right. I worked for, yeah. Okay. So, uh, AIing, like you'd have to be riding out, bringing in the cows yeah. that were ready to That's cycle? That's right, yeah. 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 I did that for them, I suppose, seven or eight different years, probably. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 He used to help them brand. He'll pile of calves for him. Yeah. yeah. That'd be kind of nice work, though. Would it be riding oh, yeah. through looking for a cow that it looks is. like she's yeah, cycling? You've got to be pretty, uh, yeah. Got to take or... it pretty cool with them, you know. And yeah. There's enough of us that if somebody was having trouble bringing them in, they could see you and come and help you, you know. And yeah. But once in a while, if there's some uh, cows really in heat, they just get in behind them and they just go. You know, they knew what was right coming. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a piece of land just up on McGregor Hill between our place and the South Thompson River that was part of LK Ranches one time, and it's still referred to as the McKinnon Place. Yeah. You know, we still use that name. Yeah. No, they've pretty well faded out of the picture, the whole company now. Is that right? Yeah, I don't think there's any such thing. Yeah. yeah. Remember any spectacular wrecks you ever got into? I know the, in the branding pen there have been times when... Uh, involved, can't think of anything you know, offhand. No, never, there. never got bucked off. Never got your rope under your horse's tail and the calf running around. The other no, side. I don't think so. I've had a not little instance, I suppose, but nothing that I can. That, uh, no, I don't think so. Have you done? Yeah, a little bit. I took a course uh, one time on on it over at Carl Wilson's, oh, yeah. and it's it's a neat way. Yeah, you know, and you can. Uh, we got on some with just a halter, and uh, I'm working on one at home right now. And uh, but it depends on the horse, I guess. If they're going to buck and determined to buck, they're going to buck. Yeah. But usually they head off to the rodeo somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that kind. Of. I love watching my my good friend Jonathan Field starting colts, and uh, when he was in this what they called the World Championship of colt starting in uh, Tennessee a few years ago, yeah. and. Uh, he had Miles Kingdon from the uh, Miles was Cal Boss at Quilshanna at that time. And uh, he would bring five six year old geldings that had been running in the hills and never hardly been handled or touched at all. And he'd bring two or three of these up to Jonathan and then they would go to work on these colts. And I got to watch him on some of them. And I could see a couple of times this colt was just ready to blow up. Well, Jonathan, he's so athletic, he'd step right off, he'd bend him from the ground both ways three or four times, get back on, and the colt forgot that he was going to buck. And he'd move him out a little bit, and he felt that that hump coming in again. He'd just step off, bend him both ways, step back on. The colt forgot that he was going to buck. Yeah. <laughs> and it, uh, it's it's fun to watch. Fast enough to step off. Well, I, yeah, now for me, I, I'd be falling off. <laughs> you might be a little bit agile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we love what we do, and we love talking about it, too. Coming up, another one of those classic songs of the West and the story behind the song, and then a, a, just a fine poem about how a ranch wife's day can really go wrong when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. 
Time for our classic Song of the West segment, and the one we picked out this week might easily have been the young Bob Nolan's theme song, or one of them. Footloose and Fancy Free was his dream or fantasy all his life. Uh, because of his work and his wife, he led a somewhat conventional life, but he wanted and loved to travel. He wanted to see all the world. And uh, with the money that should have come to him from his tumbling tumbleweeds, he should have been able to travel constantly. Tumbling tumbleweeds made the music publishers wealthy, but Bob didn't see much of it. And he wrote this song for Columbia Studios' movie Outlaws of the Prairie in 1937. The Sons of the Pioneers recorded it right away, and the song was registered for copyright on October 9, 1937. In 1939, the sheet music was included in Bob Nolan's Folio No. 1, American Music Incorporated, and the Sons of the Pioneers recorded it on the Orth Acoustic Radio Transcriptions in 1940, and two years later, Republic Pictures used it in a Roy Rogers movie, South of Santa Fe. And this is a pretty good version of the song from the great Bob Wagner, our classic Song of the West this week, There's an Open Range Ahead. If you like a lot of room and rel to roam in, where any place you stop your hearts at home in, if you like to see a campfire in the gloaming, there's an open range ahead. If you like the sound of lazy cattle lowing, where miles of sage and tumbleweed are growing, then it's time you knew the only place you're going is an open range ahead. Some folks will spend a lifetime searching far and near for something that's always been waiting, waiting for them right here. If you like a lot of room around to roam in, where any place you stop your heart to home in, if you like to see a campfire in the gloaming, there's an open range ahead. If you like the sound of lazy cattle lowing, where miles of sage and tumbleweed are growing, then this time you knew the only place you're going is an open range ahead. Up in the sky, keep a bright sun shining Out of the west, let a clean wind blow Here in your heart, there'll be no more pining For somewhere else to go If you like to hear the prairie wind a-wailing And watch the snowy clouds above the sailing You can bet your life, your heart will soon be trailing To an open range ahead up in the sky, keep a bright sun shining Out of the west, let a clean wind blow Here in your heart, there'll be no more pining For somewhere else to go If you like to hear the prairie wind the wailing And watch the snowy clouds above the sailing You can bet your life, your heart will soon be trailing To an open rain Oh, hey. Well, that's so catchy, it should be going through your mind for a few days at least. Now, this is what I call well-written cowboy poetry, and I know Billy and a lot of ranch wives at some time may have had a day just like this. Her job? Just to take the truck and the stock trailer to the last place the guys were working cattle and save them an hour's ride back to headquarters. Yeah, right. This is Susie Knight, and she calls it Three Saddle Horses. The sort and pens were empty, and the help went on their way. Now waiting for his better half was rancher Buck O'Shea. The day was slowly fading with the setting of the sun, and three saddle horses with him, twas their sorrel bay and done. Two neighbors came that morning, so he lent them each a horse. They met up at his homestead bright and early, set their course to locate all his cattle in the section toward the west and trail him to the neighbor's pen. Agreed, that would be best. They vaccinated all and doctored any in the bunch with foot rot, bloat, and pink eye. Then they paused to eat some lunch. They mounted up to ride again because it was getting late. Each counted horns as one by one they filed out the gate. 
They trailed him to a pasture that was empty for a year, where grass was green and plenty, and the mountain stream ran clear. And they rode to where they started out, back at the sortin' pen, and hands were clasped in gratitude by all three working men. They left Old Buck at sunset. One wife gave both a ride. It sure gets quiet out there when you're waiting for your bride. Where is that gal? Buck wondered. Then his bay horse nickered low. Ah, there was Sally walking with their little girl in tow. He whistled and he waved his arm. She stumbled without hope. He tied two up and mounted one, then kicked him to a lope. Hey, greetings, lass, he hid his grin. So where'd you hide the truck? She halted in her tracks and sighed. You won't believe my luck. Buck saw her disappointment. All she had to do was drive his diesel truck and gooseneck to the sortin' pens by five. He stepped down from his bay horse, gently took her by the hand. Aw, oh, tell me all about it, dear. I'm sure I'll understand. Well, she got behind that afternoon. The child's nap went long, and that was just the start of all the things that had gone wrong. She burnt the stew, she spilt the milk, she lost the diesel's key. Once she found it, then the youngster needed time to... Mm, she knew the clock was ticking way too fast, but now was stuck as their precious on the potty wasn't having any luck. <laughs> then finally, Eureka, Mommy's proud of you, let's go. Daddy's waiting with the horses and we're moving way too slow. They loaded up and headed down the dirt road at a clip. She realized the gooseneck wasn't hooked up for this trip. Oh, it took her seven tries to line the fifth wheel with the ball. She cranked it down, secured the rig, was prepped to make the haul. The diesel bumped along as she tried to make up time. She didn't even notice that the fuel gauge bell went, chime. Now, driving in a pasture was not her favorite chore. To follow tire ruts and dirt for sure requires more than many people realize, because even in a truck, it's easy to get totally high-centered. Now you're stuck. By now, her eyes held puddles. When it rains, it pours so cruel. As Sally rocked the truck, she ran his diesel out of fuel. <laughs> Buck kissed his little lassie to alleviate her blues. He hugged her shoulder as he said, Aw, oh, hon, I've got good news. We'll leave the truck till morning. I'll fix it then, my dear. Let's ride home in the moonlight. We've three saddle horses here. Well, thank you so much for making the ride. Sure hope you can join us right here next week at the same time. And thanks again to our great support crew. That's Mark and Kathy McMillan. I can't begin to tell you how much help these two are in keeping us on the air. See their website at meadowsprings.com. Oh yeah, you'll find great reading and a feeling of what our Western lifestyle is all about in every issue of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. Subscribe online or at canadiancowboy.ca or toll free 1-800-943-7336. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. <laughs>